In a recent video, I showed how I constructed a gear hobbing attachment for my milling machine, and how it works. A question I received a number of times was about how I built the controller. The thing that measures the speed of the milling machine. I tell it how many gear teeth I want, and it works out how fast to turn the blank. Other than explaining the basic principle, I didn't go into the controller in great detail, because this controller I actually reused from another project I built 10 years ago, a smaller hobbing attachment for my previous milling machine, and I built it using 2010's technology, which for me was a PIC 16F876 microcontroller. Though still popular in industry, these chips are rarely used by hobbyists and makers these days. Few people seem to have even heard of them. Of course, nowadays, everybody wants to use... <laughs> Nobody seems to use picks anymore. This is the lockpicking lawyer, and what I have for you today is... I've never been a real devotee of Arduinos. In fact, this is the first time I've really used one. I know they are supposed to be quick and easy, but that's just what I don't like about them. Now, I am a fan of what's at the heart of the Arduino. The AT Mega 328. I use at least one and sometimes four or five of these in almost all of my projects. But I always program them in assembly language, rather than C or Arduino code. Trust me, it's just better, even if it is more work especially for anything that needs to be fast and reliable. Back to the controller. This old one has some features I'm no longer using, and I'd also like to incorporate some new ones. So it seems like a good time to build a new version, and since so many people asked about it, I'm going to share all of the code and files, and yes, I'm going to use... But I'm still going to program it in assembly. Don't worry you'll be able to upload the code with only a USB lead and the Arduino IDE. I did initially begin trying to write this in the IDE, but I gave up on that idea pretty quickly. I just feel more comfortable with assembly language. To build this, you will need an Arduino Wino, an LCD keypad shield, and an LED. These are cheap and available everywhere. These two cost me less than £10 together. Try and get an LCD shield that looks like this one. I think they are all the same, but I've seen reference to some older ones that have a different pinout and won't work. Solder the LED between pins A4 and A5 on the shield, with the cathode on A4. It should be about the same height off the PCB as the screen. Yes, that's right. I did just connect an LED between two analog input pins. But don't worry, that's just what the Arduino calls them. They can be configured to do much more. On the back of the Arduino board, you will need to make connections for your encoder inputs from the milling machine spindle, and also the step and direction outputs to the stepper motor driver. I found it easiest to attach flying leads and put plugs on the end of these, as the pins needed are spread across opposite edges of the board. The encoder should have an A and B output, which need to be connected to digital pins 2 and 3. The order doesn't matter, as the direction of rotation can be changed in the software. Any other encoder pins, such as inverted outputs and index pulses, can be ignored. You will also need to connect 5 volts and ground to the encoder. These are located on the other side of the board, or in this area here. The step pin for the motor driver is A1, and the direction pin is A2. You will also need to make either ground or 5 volt connections to the driver, depending on which type you have. 
they normally have opto-isolated inputs. There may also be an enable pin that may need tying to ground or 5 volts, though often it can be left disconnected. Consult the instructions for your driver. Lastly, you will need to supply power to the Arduino, either through its power socket, the USB port, or as I did, by connecting power directly to the board. Once that's done, the shield just plugs into the Arduino and it's ready for programming. To do this, you will need the hex file. If you have an AVR programmer, you can plug this into the ICSP socket on the shield and program it with Atmel Studio, which is a free download. To program it like an Arduino, you will need to use a program called AVR Dude, which is supplied with the Arduino IDE and runs in the command prompt. The easiest way to do this is to first find the bin folder in your Arduino installation and copy the hex file directly into it. Then open the command prompt and navigate to this folder by typing cd followed by the path which should be the same as shown here. Plug the Arduino in with the USB lead and enter this command. If everything worked correctly, the Arduino should reboot and you will see this. As this is an Arduino, I thought it appropriate to make a 3D printed panel to mount it to. Also some buttons that are more clearly marked and easier to use if you don't have tiny fingers. I'll also share the files to 3D print these parts. The buttons just pressed against the tactile switches. The extra one on the right is hardwired as a reset switch. I provided a small hole in the panel, should you ever need to access this. The holes in my LCD shield don't seem to line up exactly with those in the actual LCD module. So I used these two holes to attach it, and also this clip to provide more support in the keypad area. The posts are printed with a small hole, which I tapped M3. Small self-tapping screws will also work. Now it can be installed on the milling machine and set up. There are two variables here which relate to each other. First, the number of stepper motor steps per revolution of the hobbing attachment, including any gear reduction. And second, the number of encoder counts per revolution. One has to be divisible by the other. Otherwise, this could cause a small rounding error, which will eventually turn your spur gears into helical gears. For example, if you have a 200 step per rev stepper motor with a 4 to 1 reduction ratio, that's 800 steps per revolution. Encoders are usually specified in terms of counts per revolution or lines. This refers to the number of lines or slots in the code wheel. Because they use quadrature encoding, encoders can actually count four times this number of pulses per revolution, but it's the lines or counts per rev we are interested in. 
The ideal ratio is that the spindle should have four times as many steps as encoder counts per revolution. Note that it can't have more than four times, but it can have less. Any combination that satisfies the following formula will work. If this gives a whole number, everything is OK. And here is a chart of common reduction ratios and encoder counts that work well together. Unless you need extremely fine resolution, you probably won't need an encoder with more than 400 counts per revolution, and 200 should be more than enough for most work. Once determined, the values can be entered into the controller. These are stored in non-volatile memory, so you only have to enter them once. If you try and enter an invalid combination, you will get an error. If you enter a combination that doesn't divide evenly, you will get a warning message. If you're wondering what the maximum encoder resolution is, and how fast it can go, it should be able to handle an input pulse frequency of at least 80 kHz. That's equivalent to 1000 counts per rev encoder doing 1200 RPM, and you won't need anything like that for gear hobbing. There's one feature I wanted to add to this controller that my old one didn't have. The milling machine I have now has a geared head with a single speed AC induction motor. Its startup is quite abrupt compared to my previous machine that would ramp up to speed slowly. This sudden start can cause problems with the stepper motor losing steps during the initial acceleration. After that, it stays in sync perfectly and you wouldn't even notice the problem. Unless you were to stop and then restart the machine and try and take a second cut, which then might not line up with the previous one. This only happens with the machine running fairly fast and cutting a gear with a small number of teeth. And I would get round it by either cutting to full depth in one pass, or if I needed to take two passes, I would just leave the machine running whilst resetting for the final pass. But if I forgot, or found that I needed to take another pass to get to the correct depth, this could be a problem. To address this, the new controller allows you to set a value for the maximum stepper motor acceleration on startup. If you stay within the limits of your stepper motor, this feature will never activate. But if you go beyond, it will limit the acceleration until it can catch up to avoid losing steps. This does mean that in this situation, the hobbing spindle will lag behind the mill spindle for a moment. That's what the LED is for. Whenever this is on, it means the two spindles are not perfectly in sync. It should only ever illuminate for an instant. If it stays on for more than a second, then you need to increase the acceleration value. Here's how it works. This is a plot of the speed the stepper motor needs to turn to stay in sync for a particular machine speed and division ratio. The acceleration at the start is greater than the limit set, so the motor begins to accelerate at the limit. When it reaches this point here, it's now going at the correct speed, but its position still lags behind where it should be, so it continues to accelerate up to the maximum speed which is also settable until it has caught up, at which point the speed drops and now both spindles are in sync with the correct speed and position. The LED is illuminated in this region to indicate the spindle is not in sync. It all happens in an instant.
If the acceleration is set too low, or the machine speed too fast, such that it can't keep up, it will stop and give an error message. Default values are set in the controller for both the acceleration and maximum speed, but you will need to experiment with these, as they will vary from machine to machine. The one other option in the setup is to reverse the direction of rotation. This changes which way the hobbing spindle turns relative to the milling machine spindle. So how much am I asking in return for this? Absolutely nothing. All of the files are available now on my Patreon. The hex code, the ASM file, the files for 3D printing, and some other files for reference. They are not hidden behind a paywall. You don't need to join my Patreon to access them, or even have a Patreon account. But if you feel like showing your appreciation, it would be gratefully received. You can join my Patreon for only one unit of whatever your local currency happens to be. Nothing on one, nothing on two, three is set, nothing on four, back to one.